Hello everyone. So this is just a quick teaser trailer for a video that I'm just about to release. And it's basically about Photoshop uh, CC 2014. Um, all of my tools and all my actions and all of the stuff that I've uh, acquired over the years. And put them all together in one nice little video. Now, uh, what you're going to see next is just what I'm doing and then uh, little miniature explanations of each. So please enjoy and uh, have a good day. So let's go ahead and start with something that people ask me very often, which is my hotkeys. Like, what are my hotkeys and which ones do I use and how do I use them? And so what I've done is I spent time right now just kind of gathering all the hotkeys that I can think of right now that I use quite often. Okay? Now, I use a lot of hotkeys, but these are definitely the ones I use very often, at least I can think of on the top of my head, and I'll go through each one individually as we go throughout. And now I'm going to press Control-Shift-R for chromatic aberration. Now, right off the bat, it doesn't do it. You have to actually do this. And I usually mix, mix with these first two, fix red slash scion fringe and fix blue slash yellow fringe. Now, this is, this is actually supposed to correct this problem. But if you use it on a painting that has doesn't have it, it actually puts it in. And you can see there's a little bit of fringing going there. F1 is awesome because what I've done with F1 is make it a hotkey preset. So if I want to make this a hotkey, I just press, or I'm sorry, if I want to make this a brush, I just press F1 and bam, it makes it into a brush. And I can start using right away. This is a metal pattern. So right now it's giving us a metal pattern. And if you don't see it, let me show you even more what's going on here. See? It's literally giving us a metal, metal pattern. And I have a way that I can use this metal pattern for multiple purposes. And then I turned off a line so that way it's not, it doesn't stay with where it is. But I can pick like right in the middle. And so now when I'm painting, it's just going to give me that metal texture. Now, obviously I went too low with my opacity. But it, with some practice, you can actually use this tool very effectively. And people don't necessarily do this often. Like people who start out, they're, they're afraid. And sometimes that fear is, is warranted because, you know, they just haven't put that much effort. You hear people say you should use fundamentals often, which is all true. But what's great about this process is that you're really just creating a scenario where um, you're giving yourself opportunities to be more creative. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these actions, okay? I'm going to talk about um, how to make one, too, okay? So, so that way you guys can make your own and that are useful to you in the future. Now, a lot of these actions, if you've already bought some of my pre- What else we can do is we can make a color dodge, linear dodge, color layer, overlay layer. So we'll do each one of these individually. So color dodge. And what this, these layers do, they're just setting it up so that you can actually paint on top of these layers. And if you know anything about these, these types of layers, you can use this really effectively, really quickly, actually.